coming to the Red Car and Cleveland Business Network. Um, just a, a, a word that we're now filming live every single um, networking event. Um, and the networking events will also now go on YouTube. So we've got a new channel. So it's just starting, uh, started yesterday. Um, so when you're talking about your business, uh, your elevator pitches and that, so you're going to be talking to a slightly wider audience. The videos will also be going onto the website, recordcleanbusinessnetwork.com. Um, as well as being broadcasted live on Facebook as well. So we're gonna try and get more into live streaming. I think it's, it's definitely, well, it's not the future, it's here now. Um, but for us, there's a lot more leverage that we can get out of the event. So um, just have a think about that um, for the next couple of minutes while we're talking through what's gonna to happen today. Um, we've got lots of new people in the room. Um, so I'll just introduce who I am. My name is Darren Winter. I'm the company director for Duca Digital. We're a digital marketing business, a small digital marketing business based at the Innovation Centre in Kirk Leatham. Um, and along with um, Amy Crust, Amy's middle there for Jeff Crust Furniture, and Karen King, who can't be with us today, but she's from King Celebrant Services. So the three of us, we co-manage the Red Car and Cleveland Business Network. Um, it's a voluntary organisation, a voluntary group, we're all volunteers. And it's just for the good of the Red Car and Cleveland business community to bring everybody together um, and hopefully provide insights into different things that you can do with your business, help and advice, um, and just have this business community um, just to meet, get, good morning, get new ideas. Um, just for people who don't know a lot about what that kind of means, um, one thing I was saying to somebody this morning is that we've got over 1,100 people on our Facebook page, so if you, have a social media channel, um, Facebook, um, Twitter, um, I say YouTube, please just start tagging us in. So Red Car and Cleveland Business Network, just use the at symbol. If you're on Twitter, it's at biznet, biznetworkrc. The hands will be back on the slides later on. Um, just tag us in and we'll retweet it, we'll share it, like and share it, and then people will start sharing it throughout the, the, the pages and they do start to get lots of comments and that. So it's a great way to promote your business. It's free, so take advantage of it. If you are a guest speaker, um, and we are looking for guest speakers for next year, all we ask for is just a topic that can be helpful for businesses. So somebody's got something they can take away when they're running their own business. Um, so just 10 minutes, just PowerPoint. Um, obviously you'll deliver the presentation, which you've got live on video. Um, and there's also an opportunity now that you can actually have a, a blog um, post on the website alongside your presentation and the video as well. So it's a good free way of getting promoting um, your business. So there's a couple of opportunities there and there will be an email newsletter service coming this year. So that's a lot about what we do. Um, just for kind of health and safety, fire exit, if the fire alarms go off, they're not due to, but if they do, just follow the green running man down the stairs, don't use the lifts obviously. Um, there is a green running man out here. Toilets are also based out there as well. Help yourself to teas and coffees. Um, structure of the session today, um, we're shortly gonna be doing a 10 second elevator pitch. So if you don't want to take part, you don't have to, um, but we're just gonna go through the room. Everybody can just either stand up, sit down, 10 seconds, just talk about your business, who you are, what you do, and where you're based. <coughs> Later on, there's an opportunity for you to mention an event or special offer as well. But we need to try and keep it to the 10, 15 seconds so we don't overrun. Um, and then we'll, in the between that, we'll have our guest speakers. So we've got Ray Wheatley um, from uh, Strata, um, mindfulness-based therapy. So it's a nice calming session today, which will be lovely. <laughs> and then I'll be talking about um, Google, about how to leverage um, Google in your business to try and help you get up the rankings on page one. Okay, so we're going to do our elevator pitch. Um, um, oh, say again. I can't hear you. Go on, speak up. Council support. Council support, thank you, sorry. <laughs> thank you, yeah. Um, so we are a voluntary organisation. Um, we are, um, the, the council provide the room, uh, they provide the free car parking and all the refreshments, um, supported by RCVDA as well, um, with the newsletter service. And again, Duke Digital King Celebrant Services and Jeff Cross Furniture. Thank you, Lola. Lots to remember this morning to get out. Okay. I'm going to start with Matt. He's going to give an example um, of like a 10 second elevator pitch and then we'll just work back and then we'll start with Daisy Mays afterwards. Yeah. 
Hello everybody, my name is Matt, I'm from Duco Digital and we do websites, training and social media. If you need any support with that, please give us a phone call. Thank you very much. I'm Derek from Dave Mate and Vinci Secret. Um, just really just want to tell you about an event we just had, a collaborative one. We had a surprise 50th birthday party and we had um, Neil from Sunnyside, no, Sunny Days event come with his bar. And Joanne from Charm Productions came and did some singing, a mixture of vintage and uh, all contemporary stuff. So, if you want to place for have a corporate event or private event, they take this to see you. Right. And then we start. Yeah. Morning, I'm Nathan from Solid Blue Liquid, and we do web hosting and emails. So, if you need any help with either of those, get in touch. Great stuff. Good morning, I'm Maria and uh, we, I work for Enterprise Revolution and my office is based over in the Palace Club on the seafront and we support business start-up and also ongoing support if you're struggling with any digital elements or bookkeeping, we, we have a fully funded workshop. So if anybody needs any support, please come and say hello. Thank you. Simon from South East Community Bank, which is just opened up on the high street. So what we're looking to do is basically meet with any businesses who are concerned with their employees' financial well-being and help them get out of the bill, save money and, and reduce costs. So that's us and we can do a shop as well. Hello everyone, my name is Frank. I'm from the South. Um, we're um, quite new to the area. I know my time's running down. I am uh, um, an acupuncturist, uh, which is a fantastic therapy involving needles, Chinese medicine. Uh, I work at the Lighthouse Therapy Center, which uh, if any of you don't know, is if you're on Red Car Lane and the race course is on the left, you carry on straight up to the lights, go over and it's straight over there, Lighthouse Therapy Center. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jackie Jack. I spent twenty years in the Bahamas as a theatre director. I came back to the Northeast last year and set up uh, a business helping people do public speaking, reduce anxiety, build their confidence. It could be training for a specific speech you've got coming up or just general training for anybody who wants to go for job interviews or job assessment days, that kind of thing. So I'm Jackie Dack. Thank you very much. And Sarah Carroll from Graphic Solutions, we do signage, uh, deliveries, Sort of printed. We're based also at the station, so if you need any help, let me know. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nick Murray, I'm from Red County Leap and Mind, and um, I'm funding and development officer. And uh, we run uh, all sorts of different events, and we have one coming up on uh, Saturday, which I'll mention later. Okay. Hi, my name's Amy, um, I run Jeff Crust Furniture, furniture shop with my dad, Jeff. And um, we're based just round the corner, on the corner of Queen Street and Oxford Road, and we sell, you know, a wide range of furniture for your whole home and like home accessories and things like that. Hi, I'm Jordan Hill, and I work for Red Country Fever Council. Um, I'm head of employability for the Foundation for Jobs. So I think some of you might know about Foundation for Jobs. It's a partnership that includes the business community and it's about preparing young people for employment, creating more opportunities for young people and ensuring they have access to good quality careers, education, information, and advice and guidance and so that they know about the jobs that we're creating in the local area. And it'd be great to talk to any of you about that, but the, the programme. Thank you. I'm Lola Ibado. I also work for Red Girl Activities and Council. I'm part of the business growth team. In our group, 
we support businesses, right from startup to existing and older ones. In the main, we run events which could cover anything. We reach something like the bid writing and procurement workshop, a whole day master class. And we can run short ones or one to one or group sessions. As I say, we can do startups as well. We also have um, a business bulletin, which is for your news. So if you give us your news, we'll write it up and share it with other businesses. If you're not already on our database, especially the new ones, maybe you've never heard of us, the database consists of um, businesses that work with us and that we work with in the borough, right from Loftus to whatever the boundary is towards Middlesbrough. So yeah, anything business, talk to us. We also help with money. Sometimes it's our money, sometimes it's other people's money. <laughs> but there is some funding to be had, so if you're interested in whatever, talk to us. If it's not ours, we'll link you with whoever has it. But we'll handhold until we feel you're comfortable. Is that okay? Thank you. Morning, everybody. Barbara Webster, Business Centre Officer. I also work for Red Campaign for a Council. Uh, so if you're looking for any office space, please come and see me. We have here at the uh, Community Hub. We also have the Palace Hub, and we also have South Tees Business Centre. And I'd also just like to remind you all that um, we do uh, weddings at the Beacon, so if you know anybody who's getting married and they want a different destination, on the sixth floor in the Sky Lounge, we actually conduct weddings in there. So thank you very much. Hello, my name is Sue Kirk. I work for UK Steel Enterprise, which is a subsidiary of Tata Steel. As well as offering finance for businesses looking to set up and expand, we also have managed workspace and I'm based at the Innovation Centre at Kirkcreek and Business Park, where we have offices and workshops to light. Is that 10 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dawn Smith. We've got the Claxton Motel at Red Cow. We've been there 44 years, so you can run a good, successful business in this town. Um, I'd just like to say, wherever you book in your hotel, wherever you are going in the country or the world, use booking.com, Expedia, use them to check out the hotels, but then ring the hotels direct because you will always get a cheaper price. These place, places have got millions of pounds to spend on advertising, but they don't give you the best deals. Use them for reviews and to check it out, but book direct. <coughs> Madam C. Richardson from Stardust Events. We hire out photo booths, um, interactive selfie mirrors, and iPod booths for corporate events, personal events, uh, weddings, um, anything you need, that sort of thing. We're based at the Palace Hub, this one's here. Thank you. Sorry, good morning. Uh, Peter the Word, I'm from uh, Candlewick and Sweet Temptation in Gisborough. Uh, luxury sort of gifts, chocolates, that sort of stuff. What we're trying to do with this is develop our um, sort of corporate gift range, hampers, part, uh, presents for um, members of staff or um, uh, contacts that people usually give out at Christmas, that sort of thing. But obviously we do both shops are open all the time. Thank you. Morning, I'm Pamela Highfield and I do an introduction to running and fitness for beginners and returners. So if anybody's wanting to get back into it and they don't know where to start, please come and give me a shout. Morning, my name's Alison and with my partner Joanne we have BC Counselling our website and emails are uh, tandachat.com um, because contrary to the current flow of uh, directive therapies, we just want people to come, access it easily, have a cup of tea and a chat and deal with it all that way. So it's Alison and Joanne, BC Counselling. Thank you. Hi, I'm James from the Link Charitable Trust, um, working with 800 plus children a year. Um, dealing with uh, social emotional needs, uh, we do groups, we do clubs, we've got an employability project where we're looking to help people in the community sort of reach out a little bit to them. Um, we also have uh, the kick where we have therapies and um, so that's, that's another arm to our business as well. So it's the link, Charitable Trust. Hi, I'm Holly, um, I work alongside Jen with the Link Charitable Trust which is based on Turn Street, um, it's not sorry, it's based in the hub and then it's the IP which is based <coughs> Morning everyone, I'm Nick Rogers, I run uh, Project Escape, which is a live escape room, which looking around I know a few people have done in here, which is brilliant, and obviously escape because they're here. Um, <laughs> but if you don't know what we do, we basically lock people in a room with a series of puzzles, clues, uh, combinations, and locks to open. Uh, excellent team building if you want to bring a team, or if you just want to drag your kids off their computer and uh, lock them in there with you so they have to talk to you, or lock them in there on their own and disappear and go shopping. 
Uh, folk really famous as well. Okay. Oh, that's not as exciting as that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, my name's Dawn Huggins. I'm the Business Relations Manager at Prismatic Wealth. We're a firm of independent financial advisors who invest in Tees Valley for over 30 years. And we look after all aspects of private and corporate, corporate financial planning. <laughs> Good morning everybody, my name is Dean Coates from RCBDA. We have lots of projects in the area. The one I want to speak about really is Wheels to Work. So anybody who's got any employers or uh, your business needs help with either cars, motorbikes, electric bikes, push bikes, there's that one. One I must mention is Step Forward Tees Valley. Um, basically helping people within the area who've got issues. Thank you. Good morning, my name's Cal Robinson. Um, I've had a construction company in the, in the Rec area for the last 12 years. Uh, I'm currently opening a new bathroom showroom in Rec High Street, which will be open a week on Saturday, so if you need any new bathroom there, you can just pop down once we're open. Fantastic. Okay, I think we've just about got around the hole in the room there, which is fantastic. Um, you might be wondering why I've got the festival thrift up um, behind me. Um, and we just wanted to take a couple of minutes before Ray comes on. Carl had come to speak uh, here a couple of weeks ago. It was on uh, a Tuesday evening. And I have to say, he's probably, um, morning Carl, uh, he's probably one of the best presentations we've ever, ever had um, here at Business Network. And that's me included, actually. I think she kind of topped everybody. It was such an engaging presentation. Um, and really, out of it, it's actually the opportunities for business. And they're absolutely well, there's multiple opportunities, looking like 20, 30 different opportunities. Anything you can really think of, you really can get involved. The slides, I'm not gonna go through them all now, they are on the website, and I did put a link up on Facebook and social media this week, so do go and check them out, um, and the YouTube presentation will be up on the website today, um, but it is up on Facebook. I just do want to show um, one of the slides um, here. So the couple of things that uh, she did touch on was kind of, it was a lot of out of the box stuff. So we're thinking about trying to get like a, a coach running from the train station up to the event, uh, possibly a voucher book of businesses in the Tees Valley area. Um, there's like a speaker's corner if you want to come and talk about some, uh, an issue that's personal <coughs> to you, um, just for five minutes. There's a people's encyclopedia. So if you're passionate and you're very knowledgeable a certain subject and you don't mind giving up your time, people come and have a chat to you about your specialized chosen subject. I think that's a really great opportunity. Um, there is a, uh, a Viewpoints 2020 group that I think looking to set up um, for next year's event. So really trying to kind of like bring in new ideas and, and steer that. Um, and they're really open to new ideas. There's lots of things we talked about in the town. There's gonna to be another procession happening on the Friday before um, the weekend event. <clears throat> so make sure um, you can try, if you can get into a red car for that, definitely come down. I think it will be going down Station Road and down by the front of the uh, the pier and down just before. That's for the map. What yeah, we've asked for the map. So we'll definitely share it all. There's tons. So please drop um, Cara an email. Um, every single business in here can benefit. Absolutely. E even us, we can do something there. There's, some, there's opportunities there for everybody. You think, I can't do it. There's nothing there. I don't do this. Do it's for local businesses to get involved so just drop them an email they are kind of on a very tight they're not there like 24 7 so do give them a couple of days to come back to you so if you do want to get involved you want to try and promote your business and trying to think of new ideas then definitely give them a call if they can't do it like this year i know they're looking for plans for next year so definitely to get in now because it's a it's a very successful um event uh, so i just wanted to plug that um and now i'm just going to bring up um, Ray is going to bring up his presentation. Um, this is something i um, quite excited about because it's something we've never really done before. Um, I don't want to steal too much of his thunder, um, but he's going to grab his glass of water, but it should be hopefully a nice, interesting session, a nice and chill out. So I'll hand over to Ray. So it's just your right hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Morning, everybody. Thanks for all uh, attending this uh, wonderful event. Uh, it's the second time I've been here um, on the thing, so uh, I thought I'd just share you know, some of the experiences um, for business users or for anybody, doesn't matter what size the business is, whether it's large or small, um, this subject can potentially help uh, in you know, normal stressful situations uh, and just a, a way of calming. So we'll, we'll start off with just a, a little, little thought there. 
which one? Which one are we? Are we, are we on the left or are we on the right at the moment? We're not going on this morning with uh, a lot of introductions, a lot of things going on, you know, people potentially thinking about what's going on the rest of the work day. Uh, most of us are probably uh, like the one on the left, yeah? Just a quick show of hands, anybody on the right? Uh, like, like the dog? <laughs> yeah? Who would like to be like the dog? Okay. So, a quick introduction. Um, as we said, my name is Ray Wheatley. Uh, um, I developed uh, Strata Mindfulness Based Therapies. Um, today's subject is going to be helping people uh, reduce absence and, and sickness in the workplace. It's a thing which is quite, um, quite a, a high topic, really, and quite a, an expensive thing. It doesn't matter what size of the business you are, yeah, it all adds additional costs if you've got to get new staff in or you've got to do different things that way. So. Hopefully it'll be something um, for everyone to take away a little bit about, you know, different things. Um, um, I, I actually teach um, sort of stress reduction training techniques, things that can be done anywhere, yeah. Uh, even, you know, people don't even know you're doing them. So, just a quick, quick question there. Around the room, yeah. <coughs> right. So, this is this is the hard bit, yeah. Uh, again, like we said, individual businesses depends on the business sector. You will have additional costs or different costs, uh, whatever you need to do uh, to replace anybody or go to the thing. But we'll go a little bit deeper into that later on. Uh, a shocking figure there. Uh, sickness absence, yeah. 100 billion pound a year, it's a lot of money, yeah. That's you know, with healthcare and you know, uh, long term illnesses and things and you know, stresses, anxieties and the likes. Which, uh, going by around the room this morning, there's a lot of people who are involved in doing counselling and therapies and different things. So you, know, you pretty much appreciate that. But for the people who uh, aren't quite involved with it yet, uh, it is quite a, uh, a shocking figure that. So, we can all save money, yeah, and we can all have to be nice and healthy a little bit, or you know, spot the signs where we don't, you know, we don't get too stressed, and give ourselves you know, long-term problems. So, just a couple of things there. Um, each day, people are changing. You know, people are getting more more aware, and introducing the mindfulness into the uh, the businesses to help with the, the employers, you know, part of duty of care and things like that, and you know, duty of care to yourself as well. Um, and again, it's not just here, it's worldwide. Uh, although it's an ancient practice, um, it's not religious, uh, and like I say, it can be done anywhere, uh, and hopefully reduces stress and illnesses. So just a quick introduction of what it is. Well, quite a few people have probably heard about it. Uh, developed in the 70s, uh, scientifically researched to help uh, with severe depression and anxiety by uh, a gentleman up there, you know, John Kabat-Zinn. And it's a combination of two, two or three different uh, variations of uh, sort of stress reduction, really, uh, depending on uh, the severity of the conditions or the presentation of the person who comes in. But it all leads down to the stress and the anxiety, you know, which is what we're trying to reduce, or hopefully try to reduce in the workplace. Yeah. Um, it basically gives us a chance to where we can um, look after, retune re with our own bodies again, and have a healthier life. So, benefits. Just a couple there. I won't go through them all. Um, and the thing there, but that's the other thing. Again, top one, reducing stress, yeah. Increases attention span, which is good. You know, when you're at work and you start getting a bit tired and things, you, we tend to sort of, you know, go off a little bit. So productivity goes down a little bit. And we're not on the ball and things like that. And then again, it could lead to, you know, other things. Again, we'd go to a, you know, the next slides or so. Um, times emotional stress, yeah, states. 
the big one there, yeah, promoting uh, both physical and mental health and well-being, yeah, which is what we all uh, potentially would like. Uh, but again, what we're in, what we are, one of the really important uh, there, yeah, yeah, uh, it's the short and long term, uh, not just uh, thing. It's not a quick fix, but it does take a little bit of time, but definitely worth it. So for those who like these sort of things, the main, the main key point we've got there, yeah, uh, prime example, I know we've got some t um, digital people in the room or what have you, um, but technology is probably our main uh, worry or um, sort of stress of things when things go wrong or you, you're, you're on that phone, yeah, your, your call is important to us, yeah, so we start getting frustrated, so but sometimes if technology isn't working or things, we get worried, lack of sleep, yeah. Then back to work, low morale, because we're tired, yeah. All developing and in, leading into the middle one there, yeah. Big one there, big work deadlines, yeah. Targets, how realistic are they, yeah. Do we need to put ourselves under that stress, you know, that pressure? You know, yeah. can it be reduced, can it wait? It's not the end of the world if we don't get a certain thing done. I know it may seem that, but uh, the, the long-term cost, if people are, are going to be off, off sick or, you know, because we replace somebody and retrain them to get in, we've extended that deadline anyway, you know. So, uh, again, in, uh, stress and burnout illness, yeah. Or it could be something like bullying or harassment in the workplace, yeah, leading to that as well, or leading to illness, yeah only because the bullying side is not so much bullying as in physical bullying, but it's there, um, get it done, you know, we need this deadline. So linking back into the deadline there, and it can cause people to go off on the sick, yeah. Um, so, the effects, yeah, as we mentioned, yeah, uh, the big one, yeah, if we're going in business, we'll reduce productivity, cost money, yeah, and uh, leads back into the, the previous slide, yeah, with all the other ones. Uh, causes high, higher costs, uh, understaffing temporarily, and again, again, linking back to the other slides as well, yeah, we're looking at the morale, yeah, we're not quite with it, yeah, and um, but in the, in the end of all that, yeah, the people who are still at work have the increased workload, which causes stress, which causes them to go off on the sick, short term, long term, and then the, the circle goes round and round, yeah. And for the employee, for ourselves, yeah, as business owners, or um, if you're working for somebody else, yeah, all these things can sort of exaggerate into the same thing and eventually long-term illnesses, uh, personal issues, yeah, which people are off long-term, could lead to unemployment, which is financial difficulties, stress and anxiety, and so it goes on and on and on and on again. But it's not just for the employer, it's for the employees as well, who sort of in this circle. So, question you want to know, or the answer you want to know. <coughs> nice to walk down that path where it's all nice, yeah. Everything in the garden's rosy, yeah. Can be. <coughs> so, just just for a couple of minutes, I'd like to invite you just to, instead of listening to me waffle on and you know give you some facts and figures and the likes at the moment, uh, I just want you to. Uh, if you feel comfortable, it's uh, just uh, uh, join in and experience just a, a three or five, three minute sort of uh, meditation, if you like. Yeah, um, it's not it's not compulsory. You don't have to do any answering your questions at the end of it or anything. Yeah, it's just a matter of uh, just so you can get a, a general feel and something you can use when you're in the car or you're on the phone or whatever, and people won't even know you're doing it. Yeah, so. If you'd just like to uh, make yourself comfortable on the seat, uh, sitting, sitting, sitting up uh, nice and straight, if, you know, as long as 
you're comfortable and you don't have any back problems or whatever, we're in a nice comfortable position, um, hands up in the lap and then just uh, either closing your eyes or you know, lowering the gaze, yeah, and just, so we're not trying to make anything happen here, we're just trying to experience what's happening right now. We're paying attention to how your body's feeling right now, the surroundings, background noise, could be the machine, could be nothing. And then slowly just focusing on your breathing, just being aware of how the breath is coming in through your nose and down through your body. Maybe that your, your mind wandering away and thinking, what am I doing here? Why, why am I doing this? That's fine. Just whatever it is now, just if, you, if your mind wanders, just bring it back to the breathing. In breath and the out breath. Maybe feeling the contact of the of the chair, the space around you. Again, just come back into the breathing. Now just you know, bringing your attention back to how you're feeling right now compared to the first part when we started. Is there any difference? <coughs> if not, it doesn't matter. It's, it's how it is now for you. And when you're ready, just slowly lower your head, open your eyes. And have a reshuffle again if you need to. And, uh, that's just a, a general, a, a, a short um, way of doing things where you can, you don't have to close your eyes, you can do it stood in, in your shopping queue, uh, you just stood there aware, just be, become aware of your breathing and uh, without getting irate and worried and things, we can't change it, there's not really much we can do, yeah, we're not driving that train, we're not <coughs> operating that till, we're not doing the, you know, various things, you know, we're just trying to reduce our stress. That's just one of the things of the techniques what, uh, like I said, we can use uh, to help reduce uh, that at you know, any time at work or at home. So it's just a matter of uh, learning the little techniques uh, which uh, we have information further over, uh, but um, just sort of give you a bit of an experience there of uh, how it works. If nothing happened, fine, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's how you feel on the day. Uh, it's, we're not trying to change anything. I hope you enjoyed that though. So moving forward, um, it's pretty much, <coughs> like I was saying, yeah, I run courses, I'm quite happy to come into the workplace to, uh, to chat informally and discuss any needs, what your people may need or want, uh, any questions, um, more information on courses, what we're, we're running and developing, and different things like retreats and uh, sort of uh, away days and things like that or anything. Uh, to help reduce uh, stress and anxieties. The, um, we normally do uh, group size between eight and ten people, to, just to make it a bit more informal and comfortable. Uh, just keeps it so it's not like a big, uh, big mass, if you like. And it gives that one-to-one -one contact as well, where you know people can um, express how how things went, you know, or how things felt at the time. The um, the running board there, uh, just to draw attention to, uh, we do do the sessions separate for managers, team leaders, employers, because we found that uh, sometimes, the, although it's a different hierarchy, yeah, there's different uh, things where uh, the employer or the team leaders may be uncomfortable sharing any information with anybody. You know, it happens 
generally in you know, quite a lot of work things, so we decided to uh, think if, if you wanted a mixed group, you know, a mixed uh, thing, if there's only two or three, that's fine. But it's, it, you, you, as business owners, you'll know mm -hmm. what, uh, what work would potentially work best. If there's only just you, come along to one of the sessions with other groups, your know, people, where you don't know anybody and uh, different uh, sessions like that. Okay, so that's pretty much where we are because I know it's a short, it's only a short um, session. But uh, uh, you know, if you want any deeper um, sort of meetings or more further information, like I say, we've got um, information on there, or uh, pretty much uh, just uh, you can contact me uh, either by email, telephone or on the social media. <coughs> so I'd just like to finish by thanking you, but uh, before I go, any questions? Any burning questions anybody may? What would you say to people who always struggle with mindfulness? They always say, I can't do it. it I've tried it once and it never works. What do you say to right. people? Yeah. It's basically, uh, because it's a fairly new concept, uh, well, it's an old concept, but new to people, uh, it's going back to that, uh, we want it now. Yeah. Um, it does take time. It's not a quick fix. It can't be done. It's like there's no magic pill. It's not. It can't be done overnight. Um, and it's a matter of persevere with it. Or if there's, um, if if it hasn't worked, uh, the questions I'd be asking people is, um, when did you when did you do it? Was it at a certain time of the day? You know, were you uh, did you try and cram it in or uh, think try a different uh, a different day or a different time? Um, a different technique, maybe. You know, there's there's hundreds of different ways. You know, like we just did that breathing one there. Um, it, it, one 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 particular session, you know, people might not like, or they may be uncomfortable with it. So they just it's trying trying to find out what works and then adapting that situation there. It's not, although it's a structured program uh, over the four and eight week things, which builds on each week. We um, it's not so much set in stone that you have to do this. And you have to get up at four o'clock in the morning and do it, um, or whatever you think it can be done at any time. But it's just finding the time that's right to fit around with your family commitments, work commitments, and things like that. Uh, where, um, and if it doesn't work that particular time, it's just exploring um, what was going on, what's been going on in previously you know, on that day, or uh, you know, trying to settle yourself. You know, uh, the little thing called what we call grounding. Yeah. Uh, just bringing yourself back in, into the thing rather than try and rush it and think, oh, I've got to, I've got to fit my 10 minute meditation or mindfulness in now, uh, which causes more stresses and things and it doesn't quite work. Uh, uh, but it's, it's just finding that time and doing things and, and staying with it if you can. Uh, and, and just, uh, like I say, just uh, try and fit it in with the uh, lifestyle. And thing there, cause it, it does take time. Uh, I've been, I do personal yeah, practice, you know, I've been doing that for two years. Um, following long-term illness, it's helped me tremendously. But um, it's it's one of those things where I'm still learning. There's certain days when you know, you think, oh, okay, right, I'll, I'll do that later. Yeah. Or if it, it, it's if you miss a day, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, go back to it the next day. Yeah. It's it's not compulsory. You know, it's it's there just to help uh, and recognise stresses and your know, different uh, signs and. Uh, learning the signs of when you know, we're becoming stressed or the likes. That's great. Good. Yeah. Any questions? Anybody? Yeah. I'm just coming to the end of an eight week MDCT course. Okay. And, uh, it's kind of based on depression and anxieties. Yeah. Um, it's running in Middlesbrough, probably quite similar to this. Yeah. Uh, I, I found that even just that, having that time, sometimes I'll do a 45 minute practice and it, it's sort of led by sort of the guy who's leading it or sometimes we'll do it on. There's apps you can get, there's lots of lots of apps and things like that. That's right. And for the probably the majority of people who are rushing around and doing things like that all the time, it's brilliant just for that. Even if you don't get anything else out of it, you've got yeah. four or five minutes where sometimes yeah. you're just in the dark room and you're like, this never happens where you don't have kids or families yeah. or work or whatever. So even just for that, it's brilliant. Yeah. I've been doing it a bit long term before that, but some of the guys who have gone for some of these seven or eight of us, Was that the body scan you, you yeah, were doing? Yeah, the body scan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 The Oxford College. Yeah, yeah. 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 The Oxford uh, app. Yeah. And I just had that on my phone. 
and it starts off with a dinging bell and there'll be a man or a lady you can listen to and they'll okay. guide you through the meditation or you can do one of the sitting down ones, just three, like three minute one, yeah. or some, somewhere you're stretching um, and you, you do them all as part of the course, but yeah. also you do them sort of as and when. Yeah. Yeah, they just give you that comfort at the home as well, the thing, uh, to get used to having you know, that guided uh, thing through. Um, and then eventually you know, uh, you can lead on to doing, you know, doing it with the silent bell, you know, the thing, the, the things, and as you get used to the things. But uh, yeah, there's, there's tons of stuff out there. Um, the, but, um, the similar uh, situation is that in a group session, uh, it does help with people uh, coming together and sharing the experiences as well. Yeah. Uh, after each session, you know, uh, there's normally a, a little bit of inquiry, a little bit of discussion yeah. for people if you're comfortable speaking, you know, as you would be aware. And it's just like uh, being comfortable in that environment and learning from other people you know, as well and doing that way. But yeah, definitely the apps and stuff. But yeah. There was a couple of guys who were, who were quite young guys who it was just alien to them sat in a room with six or seven other lads and saying, This made me feel like this. And the longer we've gone through it, they've, they've, they've really recognised how helpful that's been. Yeah. And uh, they say we'll take this to the club. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Recognise the usefulness of it. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, yeah. Uh, not, not a question, just a comment. Um, I've attended some of Ray's uh, taster sessions and um, really put some of this into practice and really felt the benefits in my day-to-day -day living as well, so it's really worthwhile to learn and sticking with it. I just wonder what your name is, <coughs> Strata, what is it? what's it? What's it stand for? Yes, please. Right, um, it's, um, I'll go into it a little bit more detail on the thing, but uh, what it is, it's uh, imagine uh, the strata rock, the rock face, yeah, all the different individual layers, yeah? So we need a, we need a solid foundation to, to build on anything, yeah? So on each foundation or each level, yeah, each uh, strata of rock, as it builds on or uh, gets added to it, with the, you know, uh, everything added you know, the thing with it each week, yeah, it gradually builds up on the thing there. Yeah, we look at some of the rock faces, say over Saltburn or different places, and you've got cracks in them, yeah, and you've got the, you know, the, the tectonic faults and all this lot going on the thing there, and that's part of life. That's the same as <coughs> on the thing there. Yeah. Uh, nature isn't always as rosy as what we think, but it has a as a method of knitting back in and going back in and readjusting itself. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much where, you know, where it comes from uh, on that one. Just, just, just as, as a remember, you know, as a thing to, you know, it's each layer, yeah. It's, you know, gradually build it up. It, does, it can be as high or as low as what the individual needs, yeah. Thanks, I don't think that question, yeah. Anybody else? Okay, that's great. Right, okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to bring up the Google presentation. Um, so many presentations here. So, um, if you do need to 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 go, it's absolutely fine. Um, so don't don't think that you you have to stay. So if you need to dash off to work, please follow me. Just leave. Um, but I wanted to talk about um, how to climb Mount Google. It's a, it's a question I get asked a lot, pretty much <coughs> daily now. Um, I get calls or emails or people looking for advice about what they can be doing um, with their website to, to help them achieve their business goals. It could be about generating leads, it could be telephone calls, it could be just to get an article read, it could be just awareness. Whatever your business goals are, we all have to accept that Google is a part um, of our business, so we need to embrace it, but like, how do we do that? So I think the first thing to understand um, that Google isn't just a search engine, and I think it's probably that, that, that's the first, um, it's the first mistake people think, people just think it's just about searching for stuff, but it really isn't, it, it's a lot more than that. So they've got display ads, so these, these ads that follow you around, you've been looking on the website and you might see the ads come back up again. See PPC, which is pay-per-click, so you'll see these little ad things at the top of your search results, so clicking on those, that's PPC. 
So there's things like Google Analytics, <coughs> so that's tracking behaviours, with people visiting, to, visiting your site, tracking which page they're looking at, where they've come from. So you might see things like cookies. So cookies are like little breadcrumbs that follow you around the internet, looking at what you're doing, um, and then they might show, show you an ad later on. And then Google Search Console, if you're not using that for your website, Google Search Console is a great tool to have. It will tell you, it will give you some feedback about your website, about what it's doing good and what it's not doing quite so well. So you've got large images, it's taken a long time for your website to load, it gives you all that information. Plus the things like Google My Business as well, which is absolutely huge. So Google My Business, if you've not taken advantage of that, it's free. It's a built-in map, you can put blog posts on there, you can do offers. It's actually a, a really well-recognized um, tool now to have if you've got a business, especially if it's online. One of the um, tips um, about websites that you might start, or you may not see, but you might start to see this, especially if you've got an iPhone. So things like websites come up as not being secure. So that can be fixed um, by buying an SSL certificate. So there's nothing, I'm talking about kind of technical things here, it sounds really crazy, but it really isn't. So whoever's hosting your website, just go to them, and if you've got an unsecure website, you can just buy an SSL certificate um, and then that will make your website secure. That's one of Google's um, ranking factors. Next one is mobile first. So from last year, this is July 1st last year, all new websites have to be mobile optimized. If any of these things that you, if you're not doing them on your website now, you will get a penalty um, implemented from Google straight away. So if you, no matter what you're doing, um, you will be kind of um, relegated a little bit doesn't say exactly how much, but you won't be, your website won't be as optimised as much as it should be. So you need to make sure your, work, mobile work, uh, your website works on a mobile phone. Uh, next one, we talked about large images. So if you have massive images, if you take a screenshot um, of, your, um, of, your, uh, of your laptop, um, or you might take a, a picture on your phone, very often if you just start to share it, you could be like four or five megabytes in size but then if people like living out in the sticks or if they're out on the roads and they've only got a couple of bars on their phone and they're trying to download that image as part of the overall website it really slows your website down so google now again give you penalties if your website is quite slow to load and again also look at who's hosting your website nathan's just gone but if you've got a not a very good host uh, a website host it takes very long time to load your website. Again, that's not gonna help you. So look at things like videos, maybe shorten them, consider the file size. We're all recording in 4K now, so that's massive um, file size for videos. So maybe just think about maybe reducing that, leave the 4K to YouTube to do for you, um, or just direct people to YouTube. Um, or you can just host it on YouTube and then just have a link into your website. So that's another, like a, a quick, tip that you can use. We're going to get a bit more detailed here now. So when you look into your website and how it works, so a good thing is about using keywords, okay? If you don't know what a keyword is, or you don't know what a hashtag is, it's basically phrases or words that people type into Google, okay? So if you own a sandwich shop, people might be looking for lunch, people might be looking for um, quick snacks, those types of things, those types of phrases, whatever they might be typing into Google about your business or a business like yours, those are what we call keywords and key phrases. So you have a title tag, which is basically it's the title of your website, okay? So you can see here, I've got like a little um, demo here, this is from a, um, a well-known um, search engine optimization tool. So they've got a name for their um, page, and they've also called it the name uh, the same name they've put it onto the top of this, um, this page here. Now that's really important because that can follow them down into the search results. <coughs> all right. So if your people are searching for these types of keywords here, like SEO software, could be typing things for tools and rules, resources, all of this information here is what should be in the back of your website into your pages. Very often, if you've got a small business, you probably won't have this done for you. Um, something you do need to be aware of. Just doing that makes your, pay, your website a lot more relevant, okay? And then you've got meta description. So 
So you look about 150 to 160 characters with just a basic description or a simple description about what your business is. So if you think describing your business in 10 seconds is quite hard, using 150 to 160 characters to get everything in about your business in <coughs> this little snippet here about uh, for Google is actually quite tough. So if you look at how they've done it here, it's just descriptions. There's no, there's not much about ands or thes. There's not many spaces. It's literally kind of like lists of keywords here, okay? And it's just to entice people to, that looks interesting, in fact, relevant to what I'm searching for, I'm gonna go and click on it. Okay, so think about it like an ad. So what would entice you to think about going and clicking on your website? Um, one thing that people do, these descriptions are for per page of your website. So if you've got 30, 40 page website, you need to do that for every single page. But they've got to be different. Don't do them the same. That's another thing that people at Google doesn't like. They don't like shortcuts. So you have to do it honestly. Okay, another one, alt text for all images on your site. So very often you see websites now becoming a bit like Instagram, less text, more images, okay? So each of those images need to have a hidden descriptor because this is for the visually impaired, so this is one of other, uh, Google's other ranking um, factors. So there's, if you don't know, there's uh, some really great, great software out there now which reads the website to the visually impaired, so what the image says or what the image is, um, and then along with all the other text files. So if your images haven't got that, then that's gonna be, again, um, a massive disadvantage like, to you. And also, those descriptors also feed into the general search engine optimization, these keywords and phrases which people are looking for. So it really can work out well for you. Um, yeah, so if we just provide Google best description the context the index and rank your factors. If you type things into Google, people will look for words, but they'll also start looking for videos and they'll start looking for images. So if you've got descriptors there, it'll also help your, your website come um, up high on that. I actually spoke to somebody a couple of weeks ago um, and their website was quite poorly indexed um, by um, Google, but they had done the alt text. So when they were looking for um, stuff, for people looking for images about their service, they actually banked higher on that than they did overall. So they were being found, but kind of a, a, by a different way. So it really does have some benefits. Okay, so I just wanted to show you kind of on the alt text really, because this looks a bit scary, so we're going down even deeper now. So this is a bag of Doritos, so this is an image search in Google, so somebody searching for Doritos found this image, so online shopping. And on your website, if you think about, well, where do I do this, or what does it look like? So here, this all this will be on the um, website later on, um, but you can see this image alt, and here's a description of this image, it's Doritos, tortilla chips, nacho cheese, the weight of the bag, and then the pack size as well. All right, again, if you're in e-commerce, this is absolutely vital um, to have. And then words and phrases, we've talked about keywords, but I just need to go over it again. So it's what people are typing into search engines, and this is the same for hashtags. People don't understand what hashtags are. These are keywords that you're using about your message on social media, but they can be very, similar or the same words that people type into Google, okay? Um, it's the language that's being used in conversation, even me talking here now, we think how many times am I using the same type of words? So keywords, I've used SEO, I've used Google, these are all ex examples of what keywords are, okay? Have a listen to the conversations that people are talking, when the people are talking to you, whether it's on the phone, email, all these different channels, okay? Have a look at what people are asking you, what their challenges are, what the questions are, what they're struggling with, okay? What are the re repeat, um, <coughs> the repeat factors? So people asking the same questions, people are using similar terms, potentially that's definitely a good, uh, a good sense that that's gonna be a keyword that you should be using on your site. Could be a subject for a blog post as well. Could be a subject for social media posts could be a whole page that might be missing, people asking things about your business, but you haven't really even got it anywhere. So think about it from that perspective, kind of step back from your business and listen to what people are asking about you. And then that will give you some ideas about what you can be using um, for keywords and phrases in your website. And this all goes into your page descriptions, 
your headers that we've seen at, and then you've got the articles as well. Okay, the kind of final one is link building. Um, so you need to try and build as with many good relationships with other websites. So as we're here all today networking, we're trying to strive to build relationships and get people to know about our business. It's the same with your website. It's exactly the same. So if you've got a good relationship with another business, maybe there's an opportunity for you to swap a blog article. Um, it could be that if you're registered, maybe a registered supplier um, with a big um, a framework, could be like something like Nepo, um, or could be the T Valley Business Compass, could they have a supplier list, or you might be an approved supplier within the, within the university. All these different organisations will have different pages where they will have a list of their suppliers and then links to their websites. So that's one good example. Um, you might be so on part of the Red Conkle Business Network, that's why we keep banging on about doing um, social media posts, keep doing blog posts, come and be a guest speaker if you want to do something for the website. All of that feeds back into your website and that's what Google likes. Google likes to know how trustworthy um, and original your website and content is. So the more of that you do, the more of this that you do, do that but do it digitally as well. So don't just do it rely on this side, do the digital side of it as well, okay? Um, it likes original and unique content, so videos that you've done yourself, don't copy what everybody else is doing, do it in your own way. Um, links within your site, so if you, if you are creating lots of blogs, then keep pointing that in a different <coughs> way. So it could be you know, 101 different sandwich fillings, so you might refer to that on page one of your website, but there might be somewhere else that's relevant, so again, you point to it there that really works well. Um, but again, you need people pointing to your content and not just the homepage, get them pointing to within the website, okay? That's really, really helpful. Top examples, universities, um, government sites, um, trusted media. So those should be top of your list. Um, those are the types of um, organizations you should be uh, trying to get your website listed under. These are all automatically trusted by Google. So if you're a new business, if you've got your website going, and you can get uh, your website um, sort of maybe listed or referenced. Um, that's why public PR is really good. So because now a lot of it's online as well. So if you're on a big media site like the Gazette, um, or you could be um, even Coastal Moors, like locally, anything, or uh, Zetland FM maybe, anything like that, <coughs> Google, have kind of already kind of approved them. They know they're a good trusted source of information. So they're pointing to your website. Google think, yeah, that's trustworthy. So that's good. So that's another tip that help you get up the page. Okay. So those are the types of things you should be um, looking to aim for. That's a quick whiz through everything. It's a lot more can go into. Also, I've done a little bit of technical stuff and I did a little bit kind of like top level um, stuff to make it a bit easier. But has anybody got any questions they'd like to ask? Matt, you can't have questions. I can. Yeah. You should have a lot of code in there. Is there an easier way for people with their own website to do keyword SEO on the bag of Doritos? So do people have to do coding? No, you people don't have to do coding. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, well, let's do the most common one, WordPress. You can get a plugin called Yoast. Okay, so you can get, you, it's payable, it's not free. Um, there are others, but if you type in WordPress SEO, that's all you're going to get because they've just done, they've done what I've been banging on about just creating loads of blogs and referrals um, but Yoast is really good for WordPress in terms of them um, trying to manage your SEO. Uh, we're specialists with Squarespace um, and I have to say it's the easiest um, to use um, because you can go into it there's a, a really helpful panel it talks you through exactly gives you su helpful suggestions and ideas about how things should be structured and how things look but it really is easy you just type it in click save and it's done um, any changes you make within Google, need to, you need to give them a minimum of about 72, 72 hours for, to, 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 to take effect. Uh, people think it's instant, but it really isn't. It does take about 72 hours um, to happen. And if you've got a brand new website, you're looking at about six months for it to be fully indexed. That's why if you are launching a website, you need to get it Google, you need to link it up with Google Analytics, you need to link it up with Google Search Console, you need to get all your SEO. It's a big job 
to do. But if you do it, you do it right, it'll pay off later on. It really, really will. But there are easy ways to do it. But those are the two most common ways. Wix is another one. Again, I think you can manage it in the back panel as well. Okay, next question. SEO stands for Search engine something. Yeah, search engine optimization. Okay. Yeah. So you've got your main search engines, which is Google, um, and your other one is really Bing, which is Microsoft. And people think it's like Bing, it's like don't bother. It's like, but you should definitely if you register with Google, definitely register with Bing. At the moment, the way kind of everything's kind of working across the world, everything's kind of coming back into home, and the right if you've got a global business. Um, then you do need to be aware about how people use different devices and have different laws in different countries. So if you are a business that's working or got a customer base in Asia, um, then you definitely should be using Bing um, because they have their own, or the, 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 the devices there will be more set to you be using Bing than they are Google and that's for different laws and how things are looked at from one side of the world to the other, I'm trying to be diplomatic here. Um, but definitely do some research or come and talk to us because international marketing is very different to marketing in Europe and, work, and marketing in America. Um, and you'd be surprised that even just, I think it's about 10 to 15% of traffic in this country um, is generated through Bing. So it doesn't sound a lot, but actually over, that, that number's actually starting to grow now because people are looking at Google, I don't like using Google anymore, I want to find another alternative. So definitely make sure you're doing it. And again, it just benefits. If you're on a different platform, you know, if people do go to use it, then, then you should be there. All right, next one. Is having a blog on your site beneficial? Yes, absolutely. Because that's, that's unique content. Hopefully along with your blog, you might have a, a video, you might have images, um, but how you write on your website will be probably in your own words, in your own language, because you'll be appealing to your own audience. Um, and again, you don't want to go keyword stuffing and just filling it out with loads of lists, because that's no good to anybody. But if it's a genuine article, then definitely get them out. And if you can, the, the goal is two to three a week, every week. And then if you multiply that then by 52 over the year, so you're looking at about 160 articles, you think, well, what the hell am I going to write about? But actually, if you listen to your customers, they're giving you all the answers every single day. And it really is as easy as that. I'm actually starting next week. I'm going to do my three posts a week. I'm going to start it off. And then all I'm going to do is sit down on one half of the afternoon um, and then literally just write my articles and then just to, to schedule them to go out. And that's also the social media stuff done. How long should they be? Good question. 250 to 500 words um, if you can but it can be shorter or longer it can be lists it can just be video they can just be images but make, if you do images make sure you put descriptors behind okay so you get the benefit of that next one any other questions question. oh your question as well okay yeah okay the keywords am i right in thinking that a search engine can't add them together but they can so you're better off using phrases like if you're selling a red dress you're better putting red dress as a keyword rather than red and dress as separate ones. Right, that's, that's a very good um, question, okay, yeah. So very often people sort of lose sight of that if you like searching for like red space dress. Google can, sometimes it can work it out what it is that you're looking for um, and it can join them together because it's they use AI nowadays. Um, going back a few years ago, red used to be searched differently than to dress. So, but if you type in, even if you just did it now or afterwards, if you type in red space dress and then you type in red dress together with no space, I'm pretty much sure you will get different results. And that's all down to how you've got your website and that's set up in terms of your uh, page titles, your page descriptions, your image descriptions, how you write things in your blog. That's where that all comes from. And sometimes there's positives and negatives because some people, when they're writing it up, they'll actually put in spelling mistakes because there's common spelling mistakes as well when you type in certain words, when you've got your autofill on, on your phone and you think, if that's not, it keeps coming up that word all the time. So people take advantage of that and actually put that into the site to get clever. 
It's like, what can I do differently to get people to look <coughs> from, to my website? So there's, there's some good positive, what they call that is white hat stuff. So it's, it's not, it's, not, it's, it's a, a little, um, it's a little alley, alleyway trick, but it's not a bad thing. So um, that's, a, that's a good thing. But yeah, definitely think about being careful about the phrases. Phrases are better now, long tail keywords, searches are better than shorter ones. Because people now commonly type in, in, how can I get this or that? How can I get that? What does this mean? Um, so those are the type of phrases. That could be the title of your blog post. What does so-and-so mean? 10 steps to how to make you know, an easy, affordable life or something. Those are what people are typing in. Um, so yeah, that's a really good question. Next one. We use Google AdWords um, it gives you a star and suggestions of how to improve the star. Yeah. Is there anything we can use the SEO to see what our star sort of is and what we can improve it uh, There's lots out there. Um, I would just refer to one that's called Moz. Um, so that's a really good one. Um, there's a free one um, called Uber Suggest. Um, and I'm not doing, well, I need to be careful, I'm not doing advertising here, but Neil Patel. Um, is uh, if you search for Neil Patel, anything about SEO, he's got lots of an awful lot of advice. Good person to go and have a look at. Sometimes the article is a little bit long. Um, you've got to think about they're doing what all these articles, they're doing this to get you to click on their stuff. So you have to be aware of, of like what you're looking at and why um, and just start for the entry level. But Uber Suggest is really good. Um, you just literally type in your phrase and it give you lots of different ideas. There was one that we found last week, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, um, but I will put that on the web, on the Facebook today. Um, and that's a, that's a, that was a very good one that I picked up from the university last week. Um, and you just type it in and it gives you lots of different, almost like I don't know, 500 different um, blog titles. As, as I will put that up today because that's really helpful. Um, but there's lots of other, search engine optimization um, <coughs> software, just Google them. They're not cheap. You're looking about $100, $150 per month, that's on a contract. So my, you know, my thing is like, go and do it organically, go and search yourself, think about from the customer point of view, listen to your customers, it's all there for free. Look at your competitors. So if you've got a Mac, you can open up um, a website. If you go into the developer mode through Safari, you can actually bring up all the code behind and you can see all the kind of the meta descriptions, the meta titles and all the keywords that they're using. That's what I do. So I go through a trawl through all the websites and see what everybody else is doing. But more often you'll be actually surprised the big guys don't do it. They just don't, but they rely on other things. They rely on Google AdWords um, and rely on other. So that's where small businesses can definitely take an advantage. If you're doing all the basic stuff, it takes a lot of time. But if you start off doing it and keep it going and do the checks every six months, uh, yeah, six month review, then do another three month review after that, keep that going consistently, you, it will start to pay off. Anything else? Okay. Using um, AdWords, does it help your site get indexed? We've got a new website and we've got a very large AdWords budget. Yeah. Will that help when the site finally gets indexed on that? Not, uh, not really. Well, it, it, yes, I suppose because you'd be generating lots of traffic. Yeah. So you'd be you're, you're set because people will be clicking. The only difference if it's a landing page that's not visible, you've hidden from your website deliberately. So if it's a landing page for a product or service, that then that page isn't part of your main site. Generally speaking, that's not. It, it can help, but it's fifty fifty depending on what you're using it for. But if you're looking for the fastest way to index your site, analytics, Google Search Console, and then you can force um, Google to crawl your site. And if you make any major changes to your site, adding like maybe another 10, 15 pages, Google Search Console, that's the way you need to be to force it to come back, to have a look at your site, index it. That whole process, six months, which is really shocking. But it can be quicker, and that's why Google Console is really important. The other tip, um, is because we've actually gone through, through this ourselves this week. So if you move your site from a .co.uk to a .com, from a .net to a .co.uk, anything like that, again, you must tell Google through Search Console. If you don't do it, you just won't get indexed. She's just sat there doing absolutely nothing. Um, 
AdWords is great. Just try not to become too reliant on it. I've known a lot of businesses that start off great on it, out of business in the next year, because the business is so reliant on it, so it's really scary. But if you use it in a positive way, it's great. Don't try not to rely on the only way to get your traffic. Your blogs, um, your images and your videos is the best way to do it, because it's there, nothing to keep paying for, it's free. Yeah, what we find is they go on to the AdWords, and then they come back to us because they don't buy there and then. Yep. But when they're searching us, researching us, our new website doesn't rank and it's not listed, so they're going back onto the old website, which we don't have any advertising from because that's on page one. Yeah. If you put in Starbucks, that's. So it's quite it's difficult at the moment. We don't want to take that old site down, but then we want <coughs> the new site to be more prominent. We'll have a chat afterwards. Yeah, yeah the, 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 you, you, you will need to remove the old site. No, the, anybody, I think it's good to keep it for a transitional phase, but then just get rid of it, cause, or redirect the traffic from right. one to the other. So if that's another thing that you can do. Okay, we've got to finish. My time person says, I did promise, has anybody got any events they want to shout about? Okay, right, so we're going to start. Nick. Okay, it's the uh, Bark in the Park on uh, Saturday morning, 10.30 yep. at Rocker Park. Yeah. Just come along with your dog and it's uh, six pounds on the day or five pounds pre-registration. Fantastic. Uh, Facebook and website. So. Um, Primrose Bell Markets this Saturday, Cleveland Street in Redcar. Um, it's a mixture of all kind of independent like business stalls. There's live music all day, food. Um, drinks, all of the micro bars and the local businesses all get involved as well. Um, so that's the first Saturday. Is that day for everyone? Um, and they're still looking for stall holders as well. So if any of you fancy giving that a go, you know, even just a way of um, increasing like brand awareness rather than using it as yeah, um, as loads of different kind of um, options available. Okay, load of them pictures. Creating speed networking. You've heard that before. So, 16th of July for businesses and social enterprises. Route 1, Coffee House on Queen Street. Got it. Richard. We've got the, the next Ambassadors event a week on Friday uh, at Materials Processing Institute. There's still spaces available, so if anybody would like to go along, I'll leave some flyers on the table of people on the way out. And we've got lots of new businesses in the room. So if you've not heard of Redcar Ambassadors, go and speak to Richard or go to the website because sign to be an ambassador is free. Um, all it is is doing what you're doing now, which is positively talking about Redcar and Cleveland. It's a great place to do business and to live, work and enjoy. I think I've got all of them there. Um, so go, go and speak to Richard afterwards or come and catch me at the end. If you've got any questions... It's also uh, a trusted link to your website as well. Yes, yeah, because you get a link to business. Oh, yeah, well, well done. Just quickly, the yeah. charitable trust will be doing the three peaks at the weekend. Oh, great. We're staying in a bunkhouse for two nights. We've got four spaces left. There's only 30 quid, so if anyone fancies to spend a six mile walk, <laughs> I can raise some money for the weekend. You're welcome to come along. Will it? Yes. Right. Just, just, just a final reminder uh, just on the table there, uh, it wasn't quite covered in the thing there, but we're running some um, retreats over in Kildale, uh, the camping van there. Um, weekends uh, coming up uh, <coughs> towards back end of uh, July um, on the thing there, so we can go the weekend together to escape from the countryside. Um, there's some information on there, and also for the evening sessions, um, all the information is on the table there. If you'd like to help yourself to any of the literature there, Sounds about this is a beautiful place if you've never been. We're back in September, so nothing next month. So enjoy the summer break, and we'll send the invites out for the next meeting then. And have a great summer, and uh, see you in September. Thank you.